This is probably gonna help you to attract the people that you want into your life. Now, you've probably read a book or heard of the book called The Secret, and they talk about this thing of if you just think it, you want to attract good things into your life, then you've just got to think about it and you attract them. That's partially maybe true, but there is also some things that you also need to be aware of. Now, it's great. Like, that book helped me to get on track because I used to be a very negative person and used to talk a lot of shit. And what it did, it made me realize that my mind was way more powerful than what I even knew it was. And so it really helped me to start this journey of personal development, personal growth, and my life definitely started to improve. But I also noticed that there were parts where I kept trying to achieve things and I couldn't. That's because there is also the law of repulsion from the law of attraction. So when we attract something, we have to repulse something else. So what this made me realize is that in my business, when I'm trying to attract the right customers, you also have to put effort and energy into your marketing to repulse the wrong people. If you're just trying to attract everybody, and this is a mistake that most business owners make, is they think if I can just please and make everybody happy, then no one's going to talk bad about my business. And that is a good thing. That's not true. You will end up with a mixed bag of customers. You'll have customers who are great. You'll have customers who are okay. You'll have customers that are absolutely horrific to deal with and are just an absolute waste of resource and energy. What I realized with the model of the law of attraction, the law of repulsion, is that you need to know who you want to attract, but you also need to know who to repulse based on the psychographics of your customers. And let me explain through an example of how this hindered my business and business growth. Originally, I was the well soft-spoken guy who didn't want to upset anybody. And so I would talk about a lot of fluff. I would talk about being positive all the time. I would talk about being happy all the time. And at the same time, I had no real personality. I was just trying to be nice to everybody. And what would happen would be at our events, I would get people who would rock up and some of them would be business owners. We would get mums, dads. We would get a whole bunch of the spirituality community who came in. The problem with that is that we couldn't really sell anything. Sometimes the personal development junkies would head down the back of the room and sign up. Sometimes the spirituality people would. But the people that we really wanted wouldn't sign up because we didn't have anything that would attract them to want to sign up. Also, what we found was that we had a community of spirituality people who never had any money and they were happy to sign up for a $20,000 program without having any money. Then their payments would bounce. They would go on the lowest value payment plan that they possibly could. And so the customers that we wanted wouldn't come and do our events, but the customers that we didn't really want. They weren't bad people. They would be the ones who would sign up. So what we also found is that when I tried to be something that I wasn't, we created a mismatch in our community where we would have a high level CEO who's wanting to grow and wanting to learn sitting next to someone who hasn't been to earth for a long, long time because they're in that spirituality community and they're fucking out of their head. But a lot of them were like, I don't know, just airy fairy head in the clouds, like hadn't been to earth for a long, long time. Imagine those two people having a conversation together, like the CEO sitting there thinking, fuck this community, I don't want to be part of this. Like, there's a whole bunch of crazy people in here. Then you've got the spirituality person who's there like, this is some corporate jerk who's ruining the world. You create a mismatch in your community and that destroys your community. It's so important to get clear with your business, but also to get really, really clear with the psychographics of the people that you want to attract and also the psychographics of the people that you want to repulse. So I know the people that I want to attract. I know the languaging they use. And then I also know who are the community of people that I want to repulse. And so I will use different messaging on our social media platform to attract the right people and also repulse the other people out of our community. Now, if you're someone listening to this and you're not a business owner, you can do the same thing with your own life. Who are the types of people that you want to attract? Make a list of those psychographics. So, you know, what do they like? What do they dislike? What do they drink? What are their values? All of those types of things builds a psychographic or a profile of a group of people or a person. That psychographic you can then use to go and attract those types of people into your life. And also you can create a psychographic of the people that you want to repulse. So my point is that you really need to know who you want to attract in your life and who you want to attract in your business and who you want to repulse in your life and who you want to repulse in your business. Because if you don't know both of those two things, then you're probably attracting the wrong tribe and you'll get mismatches where you'll have some people that you like hanging out with, but a bunch of people that you don't like hanging out with. Anymore.